For this problem right here, we have data collected from a gas station. So let's go ahead and try to figure out what these variables are by marking C for categorical, Q for quantitative, and I for identifier. It's important to note that something that is categorical must break things up into groups. Something that is quantitative must be actual, real numbers that we are collecting on. And something that is an identifier must break things up into groups of one that is unique for each row. It cannot and will not repeat. So the first thing we see is transaction number. And this is a number, but don't be tricked. It's actually an identifier. This would identify each row. Because you could call up the gas station and say, I had transaction 9,211. And this would be a unique number that would not and cannot repeat. So this is the identifier in the data set. Someone could call up and easily identify their transaction. So this is an identifier because these are actually groups of one right here. No one should have the same transaction ID. It's the same philosophy of calling up Amazon and giving them your order number. If you called up Amazon and gave them your order number and it was 5,286,481, they would be able to pull up the exact transaction. It's the same thing as your social security number. If someone gives you their social security number, which they should not, it would be a unique number which identifies them. Remember, identifiers identify. They could have letters in them too. This could be transaction number 9853QQ4. You never know. It's just going to be a unique combination for each row. So transaction number is an identifier. Next, we have type of gas. And type of gas would be categorical because this is just the category of gases bought. Next, we have number of gallons. And that's an actual real number because we could say, the person who got 19 gallons got two gallons less than the person who got 21. We can't do that with the transaction number. The difference between transaction numbers doesn't mean anything. It's not like the transaction number to 9,211 is somehow less than 9,853. It just identifies. And that's how you know you have an identifier versus an actual quantitative number. Because if you talk about the difference in quantitative values, it makes sense. It's an actual quantitative difference. Next, we have pay at the pump, and that is categorical, those who paid at the pump and those who did not. We have inside food sale, whether or not there was an inside food sale, and we have yes or no, which is categories. Next, we have type of payment, which is categorical because we have people who paid with Visa and other types of payments like American Express or MasterCard. Next, we have gas purchase in dollars, and think about it. Would this be quantitative? Yes, it would be because the person who paid $85.58 paid less than the person who paid $110.50. And these are some expensive gas purchases here, I must say. Finally, we have day of the week. And day of the week is categorical because day of the week can repeat. It's not an identifier. It would be categorical because we have the sales that happened on Monday and the sales that happened on Tuesday. If you notice here, I'm saying sales, as in there's multiple observations in here. This is not an identifier because it can repeat. Identifiers will only appear once in your data set and would identify a row. Now, a tricky thing that can be done here is something like pay at the pump could be put in as one and two. We could have one be the people who paid at the pump and two be the people who did not pay at the pump. So all those Ys would be one and all those Ns would be two. Now, don't be tricked because this is not quantitative. If we were to talk about the difference between one and two, it would not be that one is any less than two. It's just one is the group of people who paid at the pump and two is the group of people who did not pay at the pump. So don't be tricked by seeing a number and thinking it's quantitative instantly. Try to look at the number and be like, does the difference between these numbers actually make sense? And in our problem right here, for number of gallons, it does make sense. And for gas purchase in dollars, it does make sense. There's a really great video you can watch that goes over Mario Kart and how to use these variable types and remember them. Variable types are the key to everything we do, so it's important to keep them straight and identify what type of variable you're looking at.